I'm deliberately reviewing and moving away from series of sequences because we're starting a new topic today, though it's a continuation of old stuff. You might be able to guess from the review questions. Uh, let's start with the top one, 1a. One we should all be able to do this derivative. It's 2x, thank you. Um, this negative 4 is just kind of like a distractor, right? What difference does that negative 4 make to the gradient? A answer nothing. It changes your position up and down, which doesn't change whether you're, whether you're steep or whether you're shallow, all that. Part B, um, some people ask me some questions about this. There's a rule that we can use to make this easy. What's the name of the rule? Chain, chain rule, right? Because if I didn't use the chain rule, I'd have to take that power of 7 and I have to expand that whole thing and that would just take forever. In fact, it's exactly why I gave you the number 7 rather than like the number 2 or 3 because you probably could have expanded that. But I wanted you to see, I don't want you to expand this, you can do it without. How do I get the derivative? Don't give me the answer, give me some steps. Okay, so we do often think of the numbers moving around, but I'm going to ask you again, even though that's correct, what's the operation that I do? What's the name of that? I'm going to multiply by 7, that's the power, right? Okay, so I'm going to write the rest of it, which you kind of are implying but haven't said, and then, yeah, that power reduces by 1. That's a 6. Now most people got to this part, but some of us forgot the chain rule. We've differentiated the outside part, which is something to the power of 7. Then you've got to do the inside part, which is 2. Um, there's, there's that inside derivative right there, 2. Um, so that's how you get the 14. Are you happy with that? Is that alright? Yep. Okay, part C. I did give you a bit of a nudge with this one. It's a fraction. Um, and it's not one that can be easily written in some other form, so we can't avoid the fact that it's a fraction. The name of the rule is? Quotient. Quotient rule. Thank you. So you need to know which one's which. You've got a numerator here, which I'm going to call U, and a denominator, which I'm going to call V. And then you can launch in to the quotient rule. Um, hopefully this is something which I know it's kicking around in the cobwebs up there. It's been a while. But let's just enact it together. What's the first thing I'm going to write yes. up the top? It's just it's the x plus one. It's v. U dash. In this case, u dash is three. Then I do a minus. That's tricky because that's different to the product rule. And then I go again, but I say instead of v u dash, I'm going to do u v dash. Right. So here comes u three x minus five. V dash in this case is. It's 1, which doesn't change things, but I like to write that it's 1 anyway, because for me, number 1, it's a mental check that I've got the whole rule there. Number 2, it communicates to the person reading my working. I, I knew where this came from, and it's not like it just disappears. It is there. What's on the denominator? Uh, v squared. V squared, which in this case is? X plus 1, or squared, which I know you can expand as X squared plus 2X plus 1. Do you think it matters? Not, not usually. Okay. Um, can we tidy up? This uh, top part here. 3x minus, plus 3x plus 3. 3x plus 3. Minus 3x minus 5. Okay, now really got to be careful here with our negatives, right? The, the negatives is one of the trickiest things about the quotient rule. There's a double negative here. So I'm going to go minus 3x plus 5. Plus 5. Very good. And that's still on x plus 1 all squared, leaving me with? Numerator? Um, 8. Yeah, just 8 because these 3x's will cancel each other out. And I am done the skis. There we go. Happy. All right, now f I had a quick look around and saw some of your graphs for sine x. I'm just going to, I've got enough space just to do a really sneaky small one down here. I asked you to do it from 0 to 2 pi, which tells you what are the units of my angles here. Radians. They're radians, right? If, I were, if I'd provided you 0 to 360 degrees, you'd know the otherwise. And uh, this is roughly what I'm hoping to see. Okay, well, that sort of was a bit bad at the end there. Um, you're going to have, I've asked you to put intercepts on, how many are there? One. There's one here, which is the obvious one, but then there's also the ones on the ends, right? So I've got zero over here. I've got, oh, be careful. I'm going to put pi on two in a second, but this is not pi on two. What's this? This is halfway, right? So it's pi, last one, two pi. Are you happy with that amount of information? Well, I, you've, strictly speaking, you've done all the things I asked you to do, but what other things are important that might be helpful? Intercepts, one, one, one. Okay, so these guys up here, they're not intercepts because I'm not colliding there, but... Um, yeah, yeah, what's this called? It starts with R? This is the range, right? Negative 1 to 1, and that sort of maps across to here. Pi on 2. I'm pretty happy with that. I just asked you for the basics. Okay? Yeah, exactly. 3 pi on 2 is the other stationary point. Fantastic.